Welcome, it's Sinom. In this video, you will learn my process of how I do fundamental analysis of different coins. And for those of you who don't know what the heck is fundamental analysis, it is basically looking at uh, a crypto project or a crypto coin and trying to find out the fundamental value of that coin, where the project is headed, and if it's worth investing in based on the fundamentals of that project. So instead of me doing um, a presentation, I actually thought that it would be more beneficial if I just show a bunch of projects and I go through my process and explain it as I do research on these projects. So in this video, I have chosen a few projects. Some of them are already in my portfolio. Some of them aren't in my portfolio. So you basically have a sense of both things, what I value and what I don't value. And this may not be the perfect video, but I try to pick different projects of different uh, crypto niches. So there's something for everyone and I will link the uh, timestamps under this video as well but this might be a little bit lengthy video just because there's so much things you could be looking at while doing fundamental analysis and trying to explain the whole thought process so just bear with me if you th think this is long uh, you are probably not the only person but i tried to give my whole process as uh, as complete as i can in this video and also there will be a playlist of different videos of how I manage my portfolio and so forth in somewhere in this in this uh, YouTube space that you can actually look at different videos and ideas of how I basically do my investing as well. Anyway, that's it for the intro. Let's actually just start with the project first. So uh, the projects I have chosen for this video are actually going to be uh, Auto Farm auto token and then I have chosen band protocol because these are projects that I'm actually quite bullish on at this moment and I also have chosen a project called uh, NEO so this is a legacy blockchain and the market cap is pretty high already but I don't have this in my portfolio yet so I just wanted to show uh, some fundamental analysis of this project as well and then there's a uh, scam project or i would consider it a scam project it may not be a scam project but in my mind after doing a fundamental analysis on it i think it's a scam project so i will explain why i think it is a scam project or at least a project i will probably i would not enter a, a, a based on the information that is available anyway those are the projects that i'm going to be looking at and the first thing before we actually get started with the first project, uh, I just want to briefly s uh, tell you guys that it is super good if you have a system like Limecoin Watch or CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap and you use this favorite function. Because with this favorite function, you can basically just favorite 100 coins of your choosing of coins that you think are interesting. And you can even... Um, add more functionality like a weekly chart, monthly chart, quarterly chart, and you can see the from all time high number here as well. So if you're looking for undervalued coins, you may want to look at this from all, uh, all time high number as well to find out which coins are not near the top at the moment. So which are coins are in a dip right now. So this uh, favorite thing is super useful for me. I use it all the time. So that's basically my number one tip for fundamental analysis is that if you find a coin that is interesting, just put it in your favorite list, even though you might not buy it right at this uh, moment in time. So having a favorite list is super good in my opinion. And sometimes you can scout really good deals here. Like for instance, if you were looking to get into cards, which I talked about a few days ago, it is actually gone down by 45% already. So the entry point is much better right now than it was just uh, a few days ago. Anyway, uh, that's it for that. Let's actually start with the first project. So the first project I want to talk about is something called Auto Farm. And on Livecoin Watch, you can see the market cap is $96 million. And that's basically the first thing that I always look at is the market cap. And I also look at the, uh, the, the total market cap. Unfortunately, the information on Livecoin Watch is actually wrong. So that's the first thing that I look at is the market cap and the total market cap as well but the information here is wrong and even if i go to coin gecko and you take a look at the market cap it says 100 million dollars and the fully diluted market cap is actually correct on this one so 300 million dollars is the correct market cap 
or the fully diluted market cap when, when the supply is actually in the market. So sometimes different platforms actually have wrong information or the right information. And sometimes you can have wrong information on both uh, of these platforms. So for instance, the real market cap for auto, you should go to Binance Smart Chain Scanner dot com and actually take a look at the real market cap which is 120 million dollars and you can see the total supply of auto is now 30,742 tokens that has been released on the market but here on CoinGecko they say that only 25,000 have actually been released on the market so this is uh, wrong information as well as the total supply uh, 30,700 uh, 23 is actually the correct number here but i don't know why they show a different market cap here maybe it's because the money is in the uh, the developer uh, account that is currently not being used yet so those funds are not being used on that project i don't know why but the market cap still is not 120 million dollars as it should be but on livecoin watch uh, it's basically the same thing as well so the first tip is that look at the real market cap from the actual blockchain explorer like Binance, uh, BSC scan or Ether scan, whatever the blockchain that you are actually using for that project that you are actually vetting. So the next is actually to go to the actual website of the project. So in this case, we go to autofarm.network and you can easily go there from clicking the link on Livecoin Watch or on CoinGecko. You can get to the link from here as well to make sure that you are actually on the right page and it is not going to be a scam page from uh, Google SEO hackers trying to steal your money. So using these links is always the right choice to do. But anyway, uh, we are currently in the... Uh, in the website and here what you want to do is just make sure that the website is actually working and what i always look for on the website is that if they have something working or not already so i want to try out these different functionalities if they actually work if you can actually stake money there if you cannot stake money if you can connect the wallet or you cannot connect the wallet but sometimes i do not even click this connect wallet button on some websites that i just look at and i think they are scam project but for auto farm uh, i can trust this after i actually read through the um, the wiki pages so on auto farm if you scroll all the way down you can see this wiki button here so this is quite important on all the projects that i do fundamental analysis is that i take a look at the website make sure that it's legit and uh, then i usually quite fast go to the actual uh, doc pages of the website but with auto farm because it is a DeFi project I just want to briefly take a look at the total value locked here because this is basically the second number that I uh, look at after looking at the market cap. And by the way, I forgot to say, never look at the price of a coin because the only thing that matters is market cap. And that's like a newbie mistake that some people do is that they look at the price of the coin and think like, okay, this coin is under a dollar, so it must be undervalued. And then there's coins like that are $30,000 or $20,000 or something like that. But you should never look at the price because this does not uh, mean that it is undervalued or overvalued. Because you can have a project like Auto which only has 80,000 tokens in total. And there will be no more tokens than 80,000. And they actually burn those tokens from existence all the time. So having a supply of 80,000 tokens, of course, the price per token is going to be higher than on a project that's a, that has a trillion tokens on the market. So 80,000 80, tokens is much, much less than a trillion tokens. So if you have a project that has trillion tokens, then the price is not likely to even reach $1.00 like in the case of uh, dogecoin for example a lot of the supporters are like no 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 just get the doge to one one dollar then it will be super super good but that's not uh how a value investor should look at things anyway that's it for the market cap now let's talk about the wiki pages so now we're currently on the order farm wiki pages what i usually want to look at is basically the brief story of the project what they want to do what is their goal and i want to look at the roadmap here as well but before I look at the roadmap, I want to take a look at the tokenomics or if they have a page for tokens themselves. So for this, this example, Auto, they said that they have 80,000 tokens and that's it. And the release schedule, they tell us the release schedule. It is from 15th December 2020 
until October 2021. So what this means is that almost uh, 230 auto tokens are being released every single day and they are distributed to Vault users. So that's basically the important thing here is that the auto tokens are being distributed to the community during this time and after October 2021 uh, the tokenomics basically shift because all of the tokens are on the market. And then you can read uh, uh, like the distribution of the tokenomics and everything like that. There was no uh, pre-sale or anything like that for the auto, auto farm token. And then if I think the tokenomics makes sense that I do not get screwed by early investors dumping on me, uh, dumping their coins on me, or there's some other wacky stuff with the tokenomics, I cannot really say what is a good tokenomic and what is a bad tokenomic. You have to take a look at these individually, unfortunately. And sometimes they make sense, sometimes they do not make any sense. Like for instance, for the price of uh, for the uh, CRO token, by the way, I had a big issue with this project because they had 100 billion tokens and they had only released like 22% and they still held about, I think that was 78% that they held all of the supply of CRO tokens. So I had a big issue with that, uh, just that the company can dump all their coins onto the market and that's basically the only way for those coins to go but they actually decided to burn 70 billion tokens out of existence. So now the total maximum supply of CRO tokens is 30 billion tokens. So it's a much better tokenomics now than it was before. So that's like one tip that you can take a look at the tokenomics is that how much of those tokens are actually being held by the actual team itself and how much selling pressure is basically coming from the tokenomics itself. And sometimes the tokenomics page actually explains what is bringing value to the auto uh, holders or the token holders. Unfortunately, that is not explained in this tokenomics page here. So that's something that is lacking from this project. I would really much like to see up an explainer what is bringing value to the auto token holder. So for instance, if you use something like Celsius Network, that I've also talked about in the past, they have a separate page for their token, sell token, and they explain how that sell token actually gains value. And that's super valuable for me looking at the tokenomics. So I want to look at uh, what is bringing the value for this token. But uh, I did some more digging for this token on their Telegram channel, by the way, I will talk about those soon. But anyway, uh, there will be, or now there is the, uh, the uh, swap, so a decentralized exchange aggregator. So if you do a swap here compared to pancake swap, you actually get a better deal and a better price than you would get if you made the same trade on pancake swap. And that's quite uh, cool that it is now working. But the fees from here are actually going to go in the future to the auto holders, as well as the fees from these vaults, these auto compounding strategies also go to the auto stakers when the auto staking is going to go live. So <clears throat> the project, they promised that they will update this uh, roadmaps and all these pages basically this week. But currently they don't have that though, so I can still need to pick some problems that they have here. Next, after looking at the tokenomics and if the tokenomics makes sense, I look at the roadmap here. So for the roadmap, I want to see where the project is actually headed and what is basically their goal. Why do they exist? And from here, I want to basically see what, uh, well, for this project's uh, individual use case is that there are yield aggregators. So I know already what the project is about and what is their end goal. They want to generate more yield for their users than the user would get if they just went by on their own way, basically. And it's a mm, uh, quality of life improvement for the user as well. But from the roadmap, I want to see basically where they are headed. And for the, uh, this reason why I'm bullish on auto farm is that they are actually tackling different chains, not only Binance Smart Chain. So this is a cross chain project as well as it is a yield aggregator project and a decentralized exchange aggregator project as well. So that's pretty cool that they are doing some uh, uh, cross chain stuff. That was basically the reason why I bought so much uh, auto tokens or why I went, to, uh, why I'm still talking about auto tokens is that the potential of this cross chain utility is pretty big. And at the end, they will have a decentralized autonomous organization and 
what they don't say here but i was talking with the team and that's also one thing that you can do is you can always contact the team on their telegram or discord channels and talk with the devs and ask what okay what are you gonna do here what are you gonna do there and usually you will get answers so they already have a treasury that is collecting these fees and some of the fees will be distributed to the auto holders but they also have a treasury and for now all the fees are actually going to that treasury and the treasury is quite sizable already for auto farm which not many people know about but anyway that treasury will, treasury will eventually be uh, given to the DAO and the DAO is consisted of people who hold the auto tokens and who want to vote and participate in the governance of the project so what it means eventually is that the auto token will also gain value from the treasury that is held by the auto farm uh, DAO so that will eventually come to the system as well giving value to the token but it's not always 100% clear just by reading these alone but that's uh, anyway for auto farm next is after i take a look at the tokenomics and the roadmap i usually head over to twitter and from twitter i just take a look at what is their pinned tweet here if they have some explainer for, for the project because sometimes their wiki page does not explain exactly why they are or it has been worded better on a medium article so you may want to look at the medium articles that they have actually written so this is what i would use and also they have some links to the telegram here that's pretty cool but what i always look at uh, is the uh, uh, joined date here because this is a way how you can spot scams also so oftentimes if you see a project that just released a medium article or a white paper or something like that and they have been on twitter on the same month that they actually released the white paper and the medium article you're like okay so when did you guys really start working if you did not even have a twitter handle until you already made the medium articles about the project so are you just gonna pump and dump this whole thing and then just exit because if you haven't built anything you don't have a skin in the game so that's one of the reasons why i actually also bought auto farm is that they had this uh joined on december 2020 and i found them uh i think i found them on early february and they had been on the binance smart chain for quite a while already and they had a head start against many other uh other projects on the uh, Binance Smart Chain so I knew they were around for a while as well so that was good for me to see that they have actually been active on Twitter since December 2020 as well anyway from Twitter I just want to take a look at also uh, the uh, uh, amount of followers they have as well as the recent posts okay what kind of posts they do do they have some partnership announcements here do they have a link to the roadmap or something like that so I just want to briefly take a look at the Twitter next just not only twitter what you can also do is actually go to the uh, uh the actual telegram group and this is what i highly suggest that you guys actually do so from here from the auto farm uh, network community what you want to take a look at are these pinned posts and you can click this pinned post to basically see their most recent uh, announcements and you can just keep clicking these to go up and up and up and up and up and see the previous uh, announcements you can also click this button here and when you do that you can only just look at the different pin posts so from here you can sometimes see good stuff here and sometimes you may actually want to use the search function here like if you search for the word roadmap or something like that uh, you can find different keywords that you want to take a look at as well or if you want to take a look at partnerships you can just partner uh, use these kinds of words to find different things if you want to take a look at if there are uh, if there are some announcement that are maybe not on the website or somewhere else uh, visible for you to see actually so that's one thing to do uh, next you may want to contact the mods here if you have any questions you can always contact the mods here uh, on the groups and ask your questions if something is unclear to you after you did, uh, did your fundamental analysis and from this information what you want to do or what i do in my head is always think what niche is the project uh, attacking how good or how uh, how would i say what niche are they attacking what is the chance that this project will be one of the winners 
on that niche because I'll, you don't have to pick the winner but you have to pick a project that actually has a chance of breaking through the mud basically so does this project have a chance to break through the mud do the tokenomics make sense do you trust the team by the way uh, auto farm they uh, they are an anonymous team so we cannot really uh, look at the team behind the project but if you actually go to their discord channel uh, I don't have Discord ready at this moment right now, but if you go to the Discord channel, you can actually see the different handles that are working on different things on AutoFarm. Unfortunately, that is not visible on their website or here on the uh, on the uh, docs, docs pages, but on Discord that was available, but of course I did not have it ready for this video. Anyway, uh, the team is something that you always want to take a look at as well and see if they have done some previous projects. Luckily for me, the main dev for AutoFarm is called, or his handle on Telegram is Mild Giraffe. So I actually had been in some uh, Telegram groups together with him. So I took a look at his profile on Telegram and actually took a look at some of the messages that he had been sending in those groups. So he had actually been creating different bots for different projects before. So I took a look at his bots that he had created and I was like, okay, seems like a decent programmer as well and of course whenever you analyze different projects what you want to also add is your own analysis and your own ideas of that project and if you have any unique skill you may want to apply that unique skill so if, if for example you're a programmer you may want to take a look at the uh, the uh, uh, the programming language and the, and the actual code itself personally I'm not a programmer so I, what I have to do here is that I have to look at the uh, the audits of that project. So audit is simply a, uh, a company or an individual who has looked at the uh, the smart contracts and given their own analysis of those smart contracts. So here uh, on AutoSwap or AutoFarm, the audits are somewhere was it i have to find out where it, but this audit it looked good enough for me so i looked took a look at uh, look at it and it was good enough in my opinion let me see if i can was it actually in that page yeah so here they have audit reports from unchained.ai wider the auditor slow Mitch, which is currently ongoing so this is has not been finished but here they have the Sturdic Foundation audit. So you can actually click this here and see what the Sturdic had actually, what they had to say about this project. So you can take a look at this audit. And for me, because I cannot really read code too much, I can read a little bit, but not too much. Uh, it is very important to have some kinds of audits. So Sturdic audit is one of the one of the better or one considered even probably the best auditor on the on the market right now so if they have a certic audit and everything has been resolved of these major project uh, problems that is pretty good and you are mostly probably uh, quite safe you're never 100 percent safe but uh, this is a good sign of confidence that this audit has actually been done on those smart contracts as well okay one final thing that you can actually uh, <laughs> not a final thing i have a bunch of more things here but one more thing that you can actually take a look at is just uh search for the project name here you can search for i was looking at celsius but before i was looking auto farm and crypto and you can take a look at different uh videos that people have actually made but one thing you have to understand about youtubers is that many uh, youtubers are looking for any altcoin to make a bullish video about it just for the content's sake or to pump their own bags and only some people are actually looking at undervalued coins and looking to invest in it uh, long term and trying to find out good plans or good ideas about this so for me uh, there's one guy called Dinome. I think that's one of the best guys on the on the, on YouTube who analyze these things. So you may want to subscribe to that channel. That's one of the best ones. But there are other great channels as well that do uh, really good fundamental analysis. Like Coin Bureau is a, a great channel. Then you have uh, Finematics, and then there's a bunch of other ones that are also good. But unfortunately, not too many uh, that I follow have actually covered Auto Farm yet. 
but you can see a lot of youtubers talk about this so you can take a look at different youtubers see which ones you like which ones you don't like and uh, uh, follow those that you actually do like but anyway i sometimes just take a look at what other youtubers have to say about it and i try to filter out uh, all the hype and all that kind of stuff just find out what is the real value of this project from these people who have also took, taken a look at this project anyway that's one more thing or one more source that you can use and another source that you can actually use is something called dapradar.com and dap.com and here autofarm is listed on both of these services and from here you can actually take a look at the 30-day data and here on historical historical activity you can actually take a look at the all-time data as well so here you can see that the users have actually been growing uh, in the recent days which is pretty cool uh, the v trading volume is a little bit up i don't know it has gone quite a bit down as well so it's a little bit slowing down for now uh, the transaction volume is basically the same so i don't know what happened with the uh, with the volume but the transaction count is pretty much the same so sometimes i don't know if i can 100 percent trust these uh, statistics but you can still take a look at where what is the direction of that project where this project is actually headed towards so from here you can see 90 day users has grown rapidly basically it's a three month old project so the numbers are pretty crazy but last 30 days the amount of active users is actually pretty stagnant so this does not really show that much confidence but you also have to understand the nature of this project so it's an uh, yield aggregator so you don't really need active users on the on the website what you want to have is more users on the website and there's a better indicator to actually uh, look at than the amount of active users on the website but anyway a lot of these numbers uh, it last seven days are at least looking good so last 30 days uh, the amounts may look bad but that's not really uh, too bad in my opinion anyway uh you can take a look at these statistics they are pretty cool and they have a social signal thing here i don't know how reliable that is even but they have something like that as well and the most reliable thing that i usually look at is actually how many people hold these tokens so this is showing real growth so if you take a look at the amount of holders just two weeks ago the amount of holders were thirty six thousand six hundred fifty so they have basically increased the amount of holders by about 25 percent something like 20 percent in the last two weeks so that's a significant increase so it's looking pretty pretty solid and the graph unfortunately this graph is not too long so it's only two week old uh, graph but you can still look at the the uh the direction where this is actually headed towards so this is something that I, I like to take a look at whenever i'm in the bsc scan as well next what you also want, may want to take a look at this is a little bit more advanced and maybe not for everyone but you can come to this website called duplichecker.com and slash domain hchecker.php and here you simply type the project name and what it tells you is when this domain was actually created and what is the actual age and you can also see when it was updated last time and this is pretty good information especially if you're looking at a project that says okay we have been developing this project for three years or we were conceptualizing this project for th three years and you take a look at when was the website actually created and the website is two months old so you're like okay you guys are full of crap <laughs> so i'm not gonna take even take a look at uh, this further so those projects i usually just skip whenever they say that they have been developing this for two years but the domain hasn't actually been registered for a long time anyway that's just something that i always look at whenever people say that they've been developing these things for a long time anyway that's uh, another useful tool for that next i think that's pretty much everything i wanted to cover about auto farm uh, uh, yeah actually one more thing i forgot to say about the market cap and total value locked with this case because it's a DeFi project that locks liquidity what i always compare is the total value locked compared to market cap and what i want to take a look at here is 
the fully diluted valuation, which is $300 million, and take a look at the total value locked, which in this case is almost $2 billion. So in this scenario, the ratio here between market cap and total value locked is about, I think, 1 to uh, 7, <laughs> if I calculated it correctly. I don't know if you divide 1 by 0 0.16, what is the number that you get? In my head, I just, okay, anyway. Uh, the total value locked is seven times higher than the fully diluted valuation, a little less, less than seven times. In DeFi protocols, what I typically want to look at is a comparison to about five to one ratio. So if there's a five to one ratio, that is pretty healthy. But some times the fully diluted valuation and the total value locked may actually even flip. So it could even go as far high as one to one. So if you're in this project long term, maybe like two to one ratio is uh, good. So the total value locked is twice as much as the fully diluted valuation to make things easily comparable. So that's basically the easiest comparison between projects. And then after I've done that, I want to compare Autofarm with other projects on that similar niche. So for instance, Autofarm has um, taken a lot of, uh, how do I say, a lot of uh, ideas and systems and uh, yield aggregation idea basically from Yearn Finance. And from here, you can see the total value locked is $3 billion and the fully diluted valuation is $1.6 billion. So this is a two to one ratio here, right? And from here, you can see that this is still five times higher price or higher market cap than Autofarm. So if I just compare this to Autofarm, I think the price potential for Autofarm realistically is somewhere between, uh, if I just compare to Yearn Finance, I'm not talking about the whole bull market situation and the fact that the um, total value locked has actually grown from $1.5 billion to almost $2 billion in a matter of a week. Uh, just talking about right now, UN Finance versus Auto Farm, I think there's more potential in Auto Farm than UN Finance. Just looking at the fully diluted valuation compared to total value locked, the growth rate and all of that, Auto Farm makes more sense. So whenever I enter different niches, I try to find out the best project from that uh, from that niche and basically invest into the best project or two best projects on that niche. Anyway, uh, I always compare these things together and the easiest way to compare them is basically to take a look at the fully diluted valuation compared to the total value locked. Sometimes it may be better to just, just take a look at the market cap alone and not only look at the fully diluted valuation because sometimes the release schedules are very very long so some yield uh, farm systems actually have a uh, uh, su supply distribution schedule of three or four years even so in those scenarios the fully diluted valuation may not be uh, even worth looking at just because uh, it takes so much time for it to actually get released to the market but anyway that's what i look at uh, in the in all of these different projects especially the DeFi projects that uh, show this uh, total value locked here. Next project, and this is uh, basically, uh, this is called a BNB Razor.com. And I just want to briefly warn you, do not buy this project because this is the project that I would consider a scam. So the reasons are, if you take a look at this website and you take a look at, okay, profitability 200%, maximum ROI per every staked BNB. So, okay, they want me to stake BNB here. They have a community number, they have a bonus system, they say they have an audit here. Okay, they are a legal UK company and they have a certificate of incorporation. So it looks legit, but then it gets a little bit uh, weird because every time you hold more than 24 hours, you get some bonus points. Okay, uh, how, does, how do they uh, actually generate yield here? And they don't actually explain that in any sense and they immediately go to the affiliate system here. So it's like a multi-level marketing kind of situation or some st stupid stuff like that. They want me to shield this project and then you have these community channels as well. They don't have a 
a page for where they actually explain everything. They have, don't have a page for their team or anything like that. And even if you uh, go here and you click, how does it work? How, 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 how do you generate yield? It only shows a pop-up for a YouTube video, which is just a marketing video. And they do not even explain how they generate the yield. So what I believe from this is that they actually don't know how to generate yield. But just to give the benefit of the doubt, because the yield looks actually pretty nice, I wanted to take a look at the audit. And looking at the audit, this is not what you want to see. So from this audit, uh, it's basically an empty audit. They don't have almost anything here. So it's an empty audit. All these pages are just empty. And it's made by telescreener.in. So I don't know if it's an Indian company or if it's a company at all. They did have a website. So I don't know if they actually did an audit here or not. But this audit looks very, 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 very uh, light <laughs> and not a proper audit. So I would not trust this audit just because it's so empty. It lacks all the like individual information of anything. So. I would not trust this audit. The second thing, if you actually go to the, uh, the, the Telegram channel here, BNB Racer, and you take a look at what they have actually written here, uh, they uh, take a, uh, uh, how do I say, they remove a lot of the posts here that if you ask questions. And if you take a look at what they talk about here, they just have a competition of people depositing BNB here and they are talking about the price of BNB and then the first post is just basic information about the project and just a 100% shilling and they don't even explain anything how the system actually works. So from here, uh, I'm not convinced either. Uh, next, our, the final, uh, final thing when I was looking at is if you actually take a look at the company, you can actually find it on the registry. But if you go and look at the actual address of the company, this looks like a place where I would not want to walk when it was nighttime. So if you were here in nighttime, this would not look like a place that I would want to walk in. Anyway, I don't even know if this is a police car here. But anyway, uh, all in all, this is a project that I just would not put any money in just because they don't even explain how they generate yield and what is their end goal here. They just want people to put their BNB in the smart contract. So without me even looking at the smart, smart contract, I would classify this as a scam or at least a 95% chance it is a scam. So it could not still, still be a legit project. I'm giving them the 5% or 10% chance here. But for me, uh, this is a project that I would not touch uh, with, uh, with anything. I, I would not even connect my wallet in this project here. And some projects <laughs> don't even have the uh, the what is this called SSL I think yeah this uh, lock uh, icon here but this project at least had that one anyway that's it for that project next is the NEO project and this is a coin that I wanted to talk about and this has the same issue again that AutoFarm had on Livecoin Watch and on CoinGecko as well so if you take a look at the market cap here it is 4.7 uh, billion dollars and on CoinGecko it is 4.7 Eight billion dollars but if you actually go to the uh, Explorer uh, the Explorer the current market cap is actually 6.9 billion dollar market cap so from this uh, there's a big difference between the real market cap and the actual market cap uh, so just yeah I don't like to see this like 6.9 billion dollars is a lot of money so this project has to be super 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 good and the roadmap has to be super 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 nice for me to actually consider investing just because the market cap is already so high compared to uh, most projects on the market so 6.7 billion dollars is so much capital inside it already that it is very hard for this project to actually pump higher but let's just take a look at this project and let's see what what it is about and why I actually have not have not invested in this project. So if we go to the website here, they um, explain everything about the project. Almost it's interoperable, native Oracle, self sovereign, and all these things are on the platform. Uh, they have a wallet system here, documentation. Okay, it's a blockchain. I understand that. And the reason why I wanted to feature this in this video is that uh, 
they don't have a roadmap here. So for me, looking at this and they don't exactly explain what this is used for, this blockchain, it's a little bit hard to get into. So after looking at the, um, at the Twitter here, I tried to look at, okay, what do they have pinned here? By the way, they have 370,000 users here and they have joined in 2014. So this is a really old blockchain and a really old project as well, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that it's legit, it's working, it's great in that sense, but it's bad that some of the old projects actually have fallen behind in technology and are not as innovative as they were before because a lot of the owners and the creators have already made so much money in this that they are perhaps not as interested in uh, making it better than the competition anymore but i don't know if that's the case for neo or not but it's a good and a bad thing anyway they have they're talking about neo gas payments for donations Shopify for WooCommerce. Okay, this does not tell me anything. And looking at their latest uh, tweets here, it's very hard for me to really understand, okay, what are they actually doing here? So what I did next, you, you by the way, these are usually some uh, pretty good, if you can see like a monthly report for different projects, they're usually super good. But unfortunately, this is for O3 Labs. This is not for Neo itself. So it's a pro project inside the Neo ecosystem. So looking at this, there's basically nothing that I can click here. So let's take a look at uh, looking for the word roadmap from Neo blockchain. So you can use this formatting style to actually find tweets from Neo smart economy uh, user with a word roadmap. So I actually had a roadmap for Neo 3 from February 10. So I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at, so they have a preview one architecture, preview two smart contract governance committee, economic model, Oracle NEP 17 plugins, ledger contract. I'm like, okay, okay. I don't really see how that's impressive. Maybe it is impressive, but it's quite hard for me to evaluate into dollar terms, how much this coin can actually go up in terms of value. So looking at further, uh, I actually went to the website here and I went to the telegram link somewhere here. I went to the telegram link and from the telegram link, I wanted to open. And the first thing I noticed is that they only have 6,600 members on the English telegram. So this is a, a Singaporean project, but it does not look like they have a much of uh, international audience. So for a project that that's from 2014 and they only have 6,600 people, which is less than Autofarm and less than most notable crypto projects. So I'm thinking, okay, this is not too active. So anyway, looking at that, they only have pin posts. So no matter how many times you click this, they only have this one post and they actually had uh, NFT minting coming to this uh, protocol. So I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. What else do they have? And you take a look at these dates when these things are published. They basically don't have all, they only have two publishes for 2021. And they do have some in review Neo 3.0 core development stuff. But most of what I'm currently seeing is not super fast growth, super fast adoption. And right now, if you want to be in the competition of smart chains, smart blockchains, you have to innovate fast. Basically, Ethereum 2.0, when it actually launches in its full capabilities, you already have to have a fully functioning smart chain that has a lot of activity inside it to actually compete against uh, Ethereum 2.0. So from this, I'm currently not seeing any kind of speedy development, just mostly uh, shilling their old projects that have been there forever already. So anyway, I'm currently not seeing much activity here. And going for further, uh, going from the uh, uh, CoinGecko listing here, I actually went to the explorer called TokenView and Neoscan. So they have two explorers for this blockchain. And the reason is that on the uh, on the uh, yeah on the ne uh, yeah on the Neoscan, they don't basically have any or a lot of information here. So on BSC Scan or Ether Scan for Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum, you have all these different charts and graphs and so on. So for instance, if I showed you that on BSC scan, if you go to the resources and you take a look at the charts and stats, 
You can actually take a look at the daily transaction charts. You can see all kinds of unique addresses, charts, and so forth. So for instance, if you take a look at the BSC scan, you can see that they have uh, 65 million unique addresses, which is pretty significant, 65 million uh, wallets. But if we compare that to NEO, uh, let's take a look at NEO scan, uh, wallet addresses created is 2.7 million uh, wallets. So that's not a lot of wallets, but unfortunately they don't have a graph. So it's impossible for me to see or understand what is actually the growth rate of this. Maybe it went from 1 million to 2 million in the last two weeks, who knows? And even if I click view all addresses, it does not show me a chart. So again, from me trying to find undervalued assets, this project here does not give me enough information to make reliable uh, estimations of its future potential again. So it's again a little bit un annoying and it lacks all the charts here. So I tried another, uh, another uh, explorer and this one actually had more charts. So I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Let's take a look at these charts. So they have the button called charts and they basically just have daily market cap chart and the amount of blocks and amount of transactions in blocks and so forth. So these charts, trailing tra transaction amount, uh, NEO, how many NEO has been transferred, 2 million NEO, daily average transaction amount, 23 NEO per transaction, tra daily transaction amount, uh, from 2019, but it does not go any further than that. But anyway, this is not really looking like exponential growth to me. Uh, what do you guys think? Does it look like in exponential growth? So it does not look really or good at all for this project, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, that's it for these charts. The charts are a little bit lacking, but even the charts we have is not looking great for Neo at this moment in time. And did I have, yeah, one more thing that I wanted to showcase from here is actually the total amount of transactions ever done in this blockchain. So the total amount of transactions ever done on this blockchain, uh, let me see where it was, was it here? Total transaction count is 59 million transactions. So that's the amount of transactions in all of its history from what I understand right now. And this, if I actually compare it to a project that I already hold, which is called the Band Protocol. Band protocol is an oracle kind of like Chainlink, and I will talk about fundamentals of this soon. But here, if you actually take a look at the latest transactions, the total transaction count for band chain alone, which is not meant even for transactions, it is used for these oracle functions. They already have 62,700,000 uh, 62, uh, transactions, which is more than the whole Neo blockchain, which is supposedly going to be like a hub of blockchains in, in some people's minds. But even this has more transactions than the Neo chain. So for me, Neo chain is looking like a ghost chain. And from just fundamental standpoint, I would never put my money into Neo knowing now what I know doing fundamental analysis on this project. And of course, you can take a look at the circulating supply versus uh, the actual uh, the fully diluted supply, but even that is not looking great. So all of these signals from NEO is not looking like I want to put money into it because the future potential is not, is not there. And if I analyze the niche, which is a smart blockchain competing against Ethereum 2.0, in that scene, I think there are much better choices with lower market caps, faster uh, adoption rate, faster innovation tech, and faster uh, partnership uh, speed as well. So NEO to me is looking like it's just uh, fallen behind in that competition. So for that, those reasons, I would not invest in NEO and that's why it's not in my portfolio. But talking about band protocol, just from fundamental analysis, and this is completely different protocol from the other ones that I had uh, for this video as well. Uh, band protocol, what I just want to briefly talk about, I think I've already talked a long time, uh, it's not exactly what this is about. I made a separate video about that. You can watch that video as well if you want to learn what exactly Band Protocol does. But the key thing here is actually if you go and take a look at the 
uh, banduniverse.io. So banduniverse.io is basically a community-led project that looks at uh, the projects that have a partnership with band or projects that actually use the band protocol for the Oracle services. And you can see more, almost all the chains here are using band protocol. So you can see Tron here, Tron is here, Matic is here, uh, you have uh, uh, the Binance Smart Chain of course is partnered because Binance was an investor in in band as well. You have Mirror Protocol, you have uh, Venus Protocol here somewhere. Uh, I think it's listed here. Yeah, Venus, Swipe Venus is here. You have Icon Blockchain here. You have a lot of different Elrond is here. You have a lot of different blockchains actually using this DeFi building block to enable DeFi on their blockchains in the future. So this is a real uh, cross-chain Oracle uh, place where a lot of uh, different blockchains want to use this particular Oracle for uh, uh, the Oracle services. And looking at the band price, I did not actually pull it up. So let me take a look at it now. The market cap is $440 million right now. And if you compare that to the amount of projects that are actually using band protocol, they actually have a pretty cool uh, graph here. Somebody made this, so this is not exactly accurate anymore. It says here that Venus has $10 billion assets under management for assets that actually use band protocol for the price feeds and for the Oracle services. Then you have Mirror, which has $2 billion uh, capital. And contrast that to Chainlink, which has market cap of or had market cap of $13 billion and the total value secured is actually less than band protocol. But I don't know how reliable this is because previously I saw Chainlink and the total value secured was like $40 billion and currently market cap is like $20 billion. But all in all, the market cap of band is only $400 million, yet the total value secured right now to to this, this date is somewhere between 13 to 14 billion dollars. So in my opinion, band protocol should be somewhere around two billion dollar market cap, just to be the same value that it is currently providing to the market and, and comparing that to the same metrics as Chainlink. Of course, Chainlink has the band, uh, band recognition and the legacy support and all that but eventually if band protocol just keeps providing the oracle services and they focus on the cross chain defi systems i think eventually it will has to it will have to go up so from fundamental analysis standpoint looking at the total value secured and the amount of partnerships is really good for band, uh, band protocol and if you actually take a look at the band link a uh, band not band link band protocol twitter you can almost see a new partnership uh, almost every single week. So looking at here, let's see when we can actually... Bitmart just listed Band Protocol on April 13th, yesterday. Venus Protocol just reached $9 billion uh, total value locked. That was April 13th, but if you actually go to Venus, it's now $11 billion already. So that's already went up there. Uh, Mirror Protocol is talking about Band Protocol here, of course. They have $2 billion assets. Uh, in their system uh, they had, are talking about that injective protocol is announcing partnership with band protocol uh, terra system or ecosystem is using band protocol and so on and so forth so you can see that this is really gaining adoption all this all the time and the projects actually have really good success that use band protocol as well so eventually if you compare band to uh, link so chain link market cap which basically offers the same utility has 15 billion dollar market cap compared to 400 million dollar market cap of band protocol so in my opinion band protocol is just massively out uh, undervalued compared to chain link basically in every single metric that i could find uh, online they actually have more oracle requests than chain link does also on a daily basis as well if you go to the uh, to the Cosmos scan and you take a look at how many uh, pull requests they have per day, so you can take a look at the re requests here and you compare that to the requests pulls from Chainlink. So these are actually also higher than Chainlink as well. Oh, 
I think I talked a long time already that this video is like 50 minutes or something like that, maybe an hour, I don't know. Anyway, if you are looking into do fundamental analysis, just as an overview, look at the total uh, market cap, look at the fully diluted market cap, trying to find out the metrics that show how much adoption this project is actually receiving. Is it the amount of token holders? Is it the amount of partnerships? Maybe both. Make sure that the team is actually legit and look at if the team has previous records, if they, if you can find them on Telegram, maybe talk with them or at least, at least try to find out their discussions. Uh, make sure that projects have audits if you're talking about DeFi projects. If you have a real team that uh, is public, make sure to look at their uh, LinkedIn profiles, take a look at what projects they have actually been involved in, have they had success pre previously or not. And if they have any interviews on YouTube, those are usually pretty cool to watch as well. So for Brand, Brand Protocol, I actually watched interviews for their main guy uh, talking about the Oracle system. And he was really smart, at least in those interviews. So that was also something that gave me confidence as well to invest in this project. So this is basically my system of looking fundamentals. It's not a complete system. There's definitely things that I could still look more, but I just wanted to briefly run down all the different projects and just run down different ways how you can do the fundamental analysis of different projects. If you want to know how to actually read charts, uh, there's a specific video that I made uh, last summer, I believe, and still that video is super, super good. And also if you are interested in how I manage my portfolio, I made a separate video about that also. Those are both in the playlist that I will link at the end of this video if you want to take a look at that as well. Anyway, this is my uh, video for fundamental analysis and I hope it's big enough and good enough that I don't have to talk about this subject again. So hopefully you got, got something out of this. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this and uh, let me know if I should use another system or another tool or if you have a better way of analyzing fundamentals than I do or something to add to my uh, analysis uh, system as well. Yeah, I think that's all I had to say for now. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hope you liked it and I will see you on the next video.